Hey, and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a cartoony fireworks effect in Unreal 4 and 5. This tutorial will actually be in 4.27, but it should be applicable in any version with Niagara effects. And this is actually an effect I use in Button Pop. I'm working on a game called Button Pop. It's a mashup between a tower defense, an idol, and a button masher game where you are the main button and you have to defend yourself against all the other little jealous buttons coming to get you. I actually used this effect in Button Pop, so if you guys are interested in the development of the game, go check out the other videos. I have multiple devlogs up now, and uh, yeah, I just really look forward to seeing what you guys think. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so let's make a firework effect. Um, so let's start off by right clicking, go to FX, and down to Niagara Effects System. Let's just create an empty system for now. Let's call this fireworks underscore any. And let's open this guy up. Stick this guy over here. And we're going to create three nodes here, uh, starting off with the rocket itself. So if we just create an empty, and we call it rocket. And we're going to use this as a sort of driver for the other nodes. So this is going to drag them along. Uh, and because of that, we're not actually going to need this sprite renderer at all. So we can delete that. And we're going to add in a generate location node. And we're going to add in a generate death node here. We're going to get these messages and we're just going to fix them. Like that. And we're going to pop up to the top and turn on requires persistent IDs. And that should get rid of any of your errors there. Now we're going to add a velocity and cone. Uh, and maybe stick this to 430 maybe. Uh, at a 90 degree angle. On the Z, put these to zero. Oops. And maybe add a cylinder location to this. Just so it's a bit more random. And we're going to stick this to 20, 60. And we're going to turn this on and then this off. Cool. Now we're going to add a little bit of curl noise to this. And this will become more apparent uh, after we make these other nodes here. But just for now, uh, just for the setup, we'll fix that. We'll turn this to something quite high, maybe like 3,500. And that should be as good to go here. Um, so the next thing we need to do is make another empty. Like that. And we're going to call this one... Trails. And in this one, we're going to delete this. And we're going to make it a mesh renderer. And we're going to use the uh, the basic 1M cube here. Like that. And we're going to override this material like this. And we actually need to make one. So if we just create a material. Go into our tutorial folder. And let's say this will be called trail underscore M. And we're going to double click on this. I'm going to right click and we're going to type in particle color. We're going to plug this guy into the base color. And we're going to multiply this by this. Stick that into the emissive color. And we'll save that. Close it down. And the last thing we need to do here is change the facing mode from default to velocity. Cool, so now we just need to get it to spawn. Um, but it actually needs to receive this information here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to click on Event Handler. Like that. And then click it again. And we're going to search for Event Receive Location. Like that. And we're going to click on Event Handler Properties. And we're going to put this to 10. And this to 200. And we're going to 
put this onto the location event, like that, and spawned particles. I'm going to click compile. If we just quickly go back to the rocket now and add a spawn instance, just a one spawn instance in here, you'll now start to get little cubes. But they're really, really big and they're not really flying about all that much. So if we go to emitter state here, put this to self, and we change this to multiple, this to 10, and loop duration to 0.2. And we go down to initial particle, change this to 1, and there we go. But they are still a wee bit too big. Um, so what we need to do is go into initial particle and start setting this up. If we make this random and we put point 0.1 here and one into this guy and we make the direct, the color mode direct set and make this blue for now, like that. And we go down to mesh scale mode, turn this to uniform and stick this to point 0.1. And we're not actually far off here. This is this is pretty good. Now before doing anything else, if we go to emitter state and change the life cycle mode to self, and we change this to five, just to give it a wee bit more time. And we go down to particle update and we add in a curl noise. Like that. Let me fix this. And turn it to four hundred, about four hundred. And your frequency down to 15. Yeah, cool. There we go. Nice. Sick. Um, now we just want to add a little bit of scale to this. So if we click the little plus icon again, type in scale. And we go down to mesh, scale mesh size, like that. We just need to have a linear curve here. So if we click this, little drop down. Type in float, vector from float, and we click the little drop down again, and type in curve, float from curve, that will give you a little fall off as the edge, cool, and if we click the little plus again, and we type in color, and we Click on the little drop down again and type in curve here. Like that. We can just set this to something like yellowish. It's maybe something like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. And now that's pretty much set up for the next bit, which is the bursts. So if we right click and create another empty. Like that. And we rename this uh, burst. And in here we want to add on to the event handler. So click the little plus sign. And then click the little plus sign here again. And type in receive death event. Like that. And we just go back up to the event handler again. And we change this to spawn particles. We want to get the death event from the rocket. We're going to type in 10 here and about 200 here. You're going to get these little orbs at the moment and that's just these sprites spawning, but we're going to change that in just a second. So if we delete this guy, type in mesh renderer, and again just like before, if we plug in the 1m cube and override this, with the same trail material, like that. We have these huge cubes here. And if we go up to initial particle, and we randomize this, and set this to 0 0.1 and 1, we set the color mode to direct set, 
change this to green for now, just so we can see them. We go down to mesh, scale mode, change this to 0.1 again. And we want to go to emitter state, change this to self, put this to 5 again, match everything else. And now what we want to do is go down to particle spawn, click the little plus, and type in sphere location. And leave that as default. Click the little plus again. And type in point attraction. Like that. And we're going to fix this up. And we're going to put a negative value in here. Something like negative 40 maybe. And we need to actually solve the force and update. So if we click the little plus. Type in solve. We just need to add this guy in. And now, as you can see, we're getting little bursts. Sick. Cool. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add a little bit of randomness to it. You know, colour and noise and stuff. So if we click the little plus on particle update. And we type in curl. Like that. And fix that up. And just set this to about 100. And then add a little bit of drag in there too. And fix that up again. And add a little bit of gravity. And fix that up. Uh, but the gravity maybe only have negative 300. And if we want to scale the mesh, like before, we just click the little drop down, type in float, vector from float. And then the little drop down again, we type in curve, float from curve, and that should just have a little bit of fall off as it dies off. Okay, so now we just need the random little colours coming out like confetti. Uh, and I found a, a neat little trick on how to do this in button pop. So if you add a colour node, like that, and then add a curve to this, And then make this uh, yellow or something like that for now. And we go down to scale color here. And we click the little drop down. And we type in uh, random range vector. Like that. That gives you randomized colors. Sick. Cool. Now the last thing we need to do is add a little bit of audio to this. And trigger it via the actual Ni Niagara system. So I'm going to include these two clips here in the description down below. Uh, but you could use anything you like. Um, so if we just go back in here and we go to the rocket and particle spawn and we click the little plus and we type in play audio like that. Cool. And we just click on our file. And we bump that in there. It should just play. But it's a little bit repetitive. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add it into a queue. So if we right click on here. Create queue. Go into this guy. Open this up. Like that. And we drag out of here. And type in modulate. Modulator. Like that. Just plug that guy into there and every single time we press this it should modulate it up and down slightly to these values that we've, we've got here so if i put this to 1.2 and 0.8 maybe sounds good if we just close this guy down click on this and we just open this up a wee bit and we replace our sound file with the cue instead. That sounds pretty good, I think. Let's just have a listen. Cool. Uh, now I'm just going to delete this one for now. <clears throat> we'll replace it in a second. And for our second file, we're just going to do the same. So we'll just create a cue. Go in here.
drag out modulator. Stick that guy into there. Put this to 0.8 and 1.2. Save. Cool. And with this selected, we're just going to go along to the burst. And on the particle spawn, we're going to click the little plus. And type in play audio. And we're going to chuck that guy into there. Compile, save, and we'll just see how that looks. I think it looks pretty good. Cool. Nice. Well, I think that's the end of this tutorial. Um, if you guys have any requests for what I should do next, or if you're interested in what I'm up to with Button Pop, please go check out my content on my channel. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.